First of all, I want to thank the elders for allowing me to speak to you tonight. And before I get started, I'm going to ask Jack to come back up here and lead us in prayer and bless God's word. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for this opportunity to be here. And pray that I'll be with Carl as he delivers a message from thy word. Pray that I'll bless the, the, the word tonight that it may be in our hearts and we may grow by being here. We pray, Father, that would help us we may be humble and we thank for grace and for forgiveness and for us in this new kingdom. We pray, Father, that would bless us each one as we listen and help us we may take the word in and to our lives. Guide us now and forgive us in Christ's name. Amen. Thank you, Jack. Who wrote the Bible? In my research, I found that it was written by 40 men over 1,500 years. But here's the wonder of it all. When the 66 books of the Bible, with their 1,189 chapters and 31,000 plus verses, are all brought together, we find perfect harmony in the message they convey. The Holy Spirit revealed to the prophets the message of the scripture. The writers of the Bible wrote not according to their will or whim, but only as they were moved or controlled by the Holy Spirit of God. The Bible is then God's own word. The proof of that to me lies in 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and instruction in righteousness unto all good works, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. The Bible then is God's word to us through the prophets he chose to write his word. So we have God's word that Jesus is coming once 2,000 years ago, and he's coming again. All of the Old Testament prophecies are fulfilled in the New Testament, but the prophecies concerning Jesus coming the first time and his second coming is what I would like to speak to you again about tonight. Now Jesus is coming, but when? The book of Isaiah was written about 800 years before the birth of Jesus. Isaiah prophesied in his book at least 16 times of the coming of Jesus, as did many of the other prophets. But I want to read again from the book of Isaiah, chapter 9 and verse 6. For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given. And the government shall be on his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Isaiah also told us that Jesus would be of the house of David. In Isaiah 11 and verse 1, he tells us, And there shall come forth a rod of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. Jesse was the father of King David, this is confirmed in the lineage of Jesus in Matthew and Luke. Matthew tells us the lineage of Jesus all the way back to Abraham spans 42 generations. This prophecy is fulfilled in Matthew 1 and 21. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for, she shall sa for he shall save the people from their sins. The other messianic prophecies are cunning Jesus, are found in Jeremiah 23 and verse 5. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, I will raise up unto David a righteous branch, and the king shall reign and prosper, and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. In Ezekiel 17, 22, we read, Thus saith the Lord, I will take unto the highest branch of the high order of the high cedar, and said it, I will crop off the top of the young twigs, a tender one, and will plant it upon the high mountain. Now in John, the first chapter, and in verse 1 we read, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Then skipping down to verse 14 we read, And the Word was made flesh, and dwelt among us. And we beheld His glory, the Son of the only, the only begotten Son of the Father, full of grace and truth. So Jesus was with the Father in the beginning, and God sent his only Son to save us from our sins. But who was Jesus when he was on the earth? Was he man, or was he God? He was man and he was God. He lived a perfect life without sin. 
in Matthew 16, verse 15 and 16, he saith unto them, Whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. He lived a perfect life without sin. We sin. We all sin. Paul tells us in Romans 3 and 23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But we are saved through Jesus Christ our Lord. Yet as a man, Jesus got hungry. In Matthew 21 and 18, we read, it, read of him being hungry and was upset when the fig tree had no fruit. He cursed the tree and it withered. He got tired. In John 4 and verse 4, we read of his going to Samaria and going to Jacob's well, and the scriptures told us he was tired. He got angry. In Matthew 21, verses 12 and 13, and Jesus went unto the temple and cast them all out that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves. And he said unto them, It is written, My house shall be called the house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. So Jesus was angry at the people that they had turned the temple of God into a commercial store. Yet he performed many miracles on, while on earth. He turned the water into wine. That was his first miracle. We read of that in John 2, verses 1 through 11. He calmed the sea. This is recorded in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. He healed the sick. There's too many accounts in the, in the, in the Gospels to, know, to name them all. He caused the blind to see. In Matthew, we read of the blind men seeing on more than one occasion. He caused the lame to walk. In John 5, we read of the lame man being cured and walking. He raised the dead on more than one occasion. Lazarus was raised from the dead in John chapter 11. He fed thousands with only a few fish and some bread. Matthew and Mark record this on two, two separate occasions, 5,000 and 4,000. He was tempted by the devil, but he never gave in. He was never given to temptation by the devil, no matter what he offered. He cast out devils. Matthew, Mark, and Luke all tell of him casting out devils. He healed the sick over a long distance. In John 4 and verse 49, we read of him healing the son afar off at the same time he was talking to the boy's father. The point I want to make here is, even though the son was not present, Jesus knew who he was, where he was, and was able to heal him as if he were standing in front of him. He walked on the water. Matthew, Mark, and John tells us of this account. But he was still God in the flesh. But he still had all power. In Matthew 28 and verse 18 we read, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. He had all power. He had power over nature, illness, and death. For Jesus, nothing was impossible. I found a list of miracles on the internet that lists 45 separate accounts of his uh, miracles that are listed in the New Testament. But are the miracles and teaching we read the only ones he did? The answer is no. John tells us 22 verse 25, and there were many other things that Jesus did in which, if it should be written, every one, I suppose that even the world could not contain the books that should be written. Amen. Now, folks, that is a lot of books. In Malachi 4 and verse 5, we read, And behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Now, what's the day of the Lord? This is the second coming of Jesus. Malachi tells us our Heavenly Father will send Elijah before him, but when will he come? In Matthew 17, Jesus tells us that answer. After six days, Jesus take Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bringeth them up into the high mountain. And he was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was as white. And behold, there appeared unto him Moses and Elijah talking to him. Verse 10 tells us, and the disciples asked him, saying, 
Why then say the scribes that Elias must come first? And Jesus answered and saith unto them, Elias must truly come and restore all things. But I say unto you that Elias has already come, and that you knew him not. But have done unto him whatsoever they listed. Likewise shall also the Son of Man suffer unto them. And in verse 13 he said, Then the disciples understood he spake of John the Baptist. So what do we know? We know Jesus is coming. Isaiah foretold of the prophet of Jesus coming 800 years before the birth. The New Testament Gospels all, all tell of the birth of Jesus, of his life, his ministry, his death on the cross, and his resurrection, and his ascent back to heaven. All of the Old Testament prophecies were fulfilled in the New Testament. 3. Malachi told us of the coming of Elijah. Jesus confirmed that Elijah had already come, and the people did not know him. So all the prophecies of the virgin birth of Jesus, the coming of Elijah, have all been fulfilled. So what is next? Well, the second coming. But when will that happen? Today? Tomorrow? Next week? Next month? Next year? Ten years? A hundred years? A thousand? Ten thousand years? We don't know when he will come, but Jesus tells us. No one, and I mean no one on earth, knows when that day will be. Jesus tells us in Matthew 24 and verse 36, but of that day and hour knoweth no man, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. Jesus told, him, told us that even he doesn't know when he will return. Only the Father knows when that day will be. Only the Father. So the question I ask you tonight, are you ready for Jesus to come? Isaiah the prophet foretold of the virgin birth, and that was fulfilled in the Gospels. Malachi told us Elijah would come, and the, under, and the disciples, apostles, understood from Jesus that Elijah had returned. So everything that was prophesied has come true. Now we wait. We must be ready for Jesus to come, no matter the day or the hour. So the question I have for you tonight is, are you ready to meet your Savior? If he came now, are you ready? If not, I ask you, why not? Have you fallen away from the church and need to come back? Would you like to place your membership here? If you've heard the word of God and want to be baptized, we're ready. It's ready and so are we. I ask you again, do you need the prayers of the church? Our elders would be happy to pray for you. All you have to do is ask them. Would you come as we stand and sing?